Hi Studio, thanks for dropping by. In today's video, I will be demonstrating the use of colored pencils on sanded paper. In this case, UART 500 using odorless mineral spirits or OMS. Colored pencils I will be using will be the Caran d'Ache Luminance, but this will work with any combination of pencils that blend with OMS. I'll be giving you a few tips along the way, as well as explain how you know you have enough pigment on your surface to use OMS and what to do when you don't and how to fix it. I don't typically use OMS, but for this paper and application, it works well, simplifies the process and really cuts down on your time. I believe in working smarter, not harder to get the best result. I started on the background. Since it is a blurry background, I don't have to worry about the crisp lines and everything will be blended into one another. I start laying down my pencils in overlapping colors just as I normally would. Because UART is a sanded surface, it will look very rough. I also don't worry too much about super sharp pencils at this point as they were dull very quickly anyway on this first layer. You will need enough layers of pigment on your surface to be able to blend with the OMS, so I apply several layers. When I use OMS, I use a combination of a site and fill in order to judge when I have enough pigment on the surface. So pay close attention to the feel of your pencil as it lays down. The more you fill the tooth of the paper, the smoother the fill becomes. You don't need to apply much pressure as you don't want to crush the tooth of the paper. If you would like a more in-depth video on how to use OMS, I will leave a link in the pop-up card and description below. After a few layers, you should start to feel it slide a bit more and notice that the pigment of the pencil isn't really making a huge difference in your layering without adding more pressure. This is when you want to apply your first layer of OMS. I pour my OMS in a small one ounce container so there isn't much that I work with at one time and be sure to seal your container in between uses. It is also a good idea to use in a well ventilated area. This one ounce is typically enough to do an entire artwork with some left over. So as I said, you don't need a lot. There are other products you can use if you don't want to use OMS. There's Gamsol, alcohol markers, even finesse pens. I will leave a link in the pop-up card and the description box in a comparison of the finesse pen and OMS if you would like to see the difference. In short, they all work about the same, so if blending with OMS or similar is of interest to you, then be sure to do your research and see which works best for you and your techniques. I do recommend staying with art supply products to maintain the archival qualities of the materials you use. Things like baby oil, Vaseline, hair gel, hairspray, etc. are not archival and should be avoided to keep the integrity of your work intact. Just because it works doesn't mean you should use it especially on commission pieces. You will need a paintbrush for this next part. You can use any paintbrush that works well. You don't want a stiff one like for oils, but not a real soft one typically used for watercolor either. Somewhere in between. Give a few a try and see which one works best for you. You can use any shape you prefer as well, as long as you are getting the results you are looking for. What is your favorite brush to use with OMS? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to include why it is your preferred brush. I dip my brush into the OMS and then lightly dab on the paper towel before heading to my piece. This will remove the excess OMS that would create more of a puddling effect, which is not what we want here. You don't need a lot on your brush and the more layers you apply, the less OMS you need. Once you get to about three or so layers with OMS, it should be pretty close to dry when you apply it, so it doesn't create mud. Once I start to apply the OMS, you will notice that it evens out all the colors and fills in the gaps that you saw as you applied the pigment. If you have enough pigment on the paper, then you should end up with an even appearance in your piece. Now, if you end up with it still looking rough and have a lot of gaps, then you don't have enough pigment on the paper. Here's an example of what I mean. Don't worry, it is easy to fix. First, you need to let the area dry. Since it is on sanded paper, it typically takes longer than it does on something like watercolor paper. I usually give the area at least 15 to 20 minutes or so to dry, sometimes longer if necessary. If you do not wait until it is dry, you will end up with a huge mess and more than likely flatten the tooth of the paper so you will not be able to layer anymore. So taking the time to let it dry is important. If you are like me and hate to wait, 
I suggest working in sections and work in another area until the previous one is dry. This way you are still progressing on your piece while the other area dries and you can work back and forth in this manner. Are you enjoying this video? Have I given you some good tips so far? If you would like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you will get more tips and techniques that you can incorporate into your workflow. And a share is always appreciated. So after the area is dry, to fix the thin or rough spots, just reapply pigment. It is as easy as that. Just make sure you have enough on there this time before you use OMS again. This can also be done in the second layer of laying down your pigment. For the second layer of the background, besides fixing the couple of thinner areas, I concentrate on creating smoother blends to achieve that blurry effect I'm going for. For blending out the second time, I again use OMS and a brush, being sure to use less OMS this time so it doesn't create mud. Once I was happy with the background, I then moved on to the hollow tree. Notice I am laying down my whites first, then move into darker colors in this instance. I often do this to preserve those whites and know exactly where they are. It also helps to keep the transitions between the lights, mids, and darks as I work, since I'm creating those value gradients from light to dark. While you can create lights over darks on sanded papers, you will never get that pure white if you don't start out with the pure white, as white will mix with the other colors underneath, even without OMS. I blend the top out with OMS, and it is worth noting, when working with a large value range, as I am in this area, it is best to start with the lighter and move to the darker areas and don't go over the lighter areas again until you clean the dark pigment off your brush. If the darks get toned down, that is fine, as it is easier to bring those back in subsequent layers. Once you muddy that white, it is hard to come back from. So I basically move along the piece in the same manner, creating the general idea of what the basic shapes are of the different values in the different areas. When you are done with the first go around, you will probably end up with something looking a bit more blocky and cartoony. These are the underlayers, and that is basically what it is meant to be and do. As you add more layers and blend either with OMS or just friction with your pencils, you will start to see the transitions and details coming to life. Now, there does come a time when you need to just stop using OMS and start putting in details. So how many layers before you start putting in details? Well, there's really no right or wrong answer here. There are many factors to this, like how much pigment was on your first and subsequent layers, how much OMS you used to start off with, what type of paper you use, and the final appearance you want your piece to have. Sometimes I'll do three to four, others I may just do one. For UART, I typically do at least two. Once my pencil starts to glide more without leaving those very rough lines behind, I typically stop using OMS and just use my pencils. Fun fact. You can use this method as more of a painting technique to really move those layers around more if you wanted to. You can also rub pigment on sanded paper off your piece and apply OMS like a paint type pigment and brush it on the surface. This is great for smoother papers, especially if you are heavy handed. It is also a great way to get those white fine details of whiskers while still being archival. You may have to put a couple of layers, but you'll be amazed at what a difference it can make. I also wanted to make a note of how I did the inside of the hollow tree. I have a dark layer that I blended out with OMS. Once dry, I go back over it with lighter layers of pigment to create the textures within the stump. I use my darker pencils for the darker area. But before I blend, notice how the value is very light. This is on purpose because I know I will be able to tone them down when I blend them out with the OMS. Voila, instant texture. I go back and add in a bit more dark and a few highlights, but for the most part is basically made itself happen. Don't be discouraged if this doesn't work for you the first time. It took a bit of practice for me to know what I can and cannot get away with. So try different things and usually, as long as there is tooth left on the paper, there isn't much you can't recover from. While it is true that colored pencils are not a forgiving medium, they are more forgiving than you think with just a bit of practice and figuring out how to overcome obstacles you run into. So once I get the tree and leaves done, I start on the raccoon. He was pretty fun to do and notice that I usually have my pencil sharp for this so I can get those fine details in. 
Many times we'll start with colors that are much lighter than I will want in the end, so my mids will show up better. Basically, I tint those lighter colors with darker colors. This is a great way to create more depth. I will also sometimes work the darks in the negative after I put in the details. You can really notice that in the arm here. I wasn't happy with the depth of the fur in this area, so I decided to use my dark pencils to bring in more darks in between the lighter fur. I then came back over with some of the lighter pencils so it gives a more layered effect. The key to fur is to really pay attention to the direction the fur is going as well as the length. This also helps to create the anatomy of the animal. Fur on the face and feet is typically shorter than other places and the direction can indicate movement or bends in arms, rolls in the skin, and the list can go on. Also, don't be afraid to be a little lighter, then lightly tone with the mids and darks to create those shadows and depth. You will see me do this a lot on animals especially, but anything I want to create some sort of texture. Nature is much more complex than just one or two colors, so by creating your subject in this manner, you will not only create more depth, but complexity and realism as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, keep on arting.